Hey YouTube, this is Guy. Today we are checking out a beast of a Casio G-Shock. As you're probably aware, if you've been following my channel, I am a fan of G-Shocks, but I have never seen anything like this. This is the Casio Golfmaster GWN1000E-8A. It is got more features than you could choke a cow with. It's crazy how much stuff this can do compared to the G-Shock watches that I am used to. Um, it is a very big watch and uh, kind of, it doesn't really lay flat, so I kind of got it propped up here. Uh, but first things we'll talk about are the diameter, the, the overall size on this guy. This watch, uh, case diameter, including the sensor and the crown, I measured the whole width here, is 56 millimeters in diameter. Now, normally on a watch we'd measure the lugs, and this doesn't really have like normal style lugs per se, but measuring this area here, which you would kind of consider the lugs, I get a measurement of roughly 30 millimeters. Uh, so big diameter, big bracelet or, or strap rather, lug dimensions. Uh, thickness also quite thick at 16 millimeters in thickness. And the dimension from the top to the bottom here, from the very top to the very bottom, I get 59 millimeters. So yeah, it is overall a very large watch, but it is a, a beast. I mean, you could probably beat this thing with a hammer and it would hold up. Of course, it's a G-Shock, so you get G-Shock toughness. Uh, but this is unlike any other G-Shock that I've ever seen. This is, of course, on loan from a viewer, and I have to thank the viewer. Uh, I, I really appreciate the loan. I, I enjoyed checking this watch out. It's super cool. It's really interesting. And, uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Now, this thing has so many features that I'm not going to be able to demonstrate all of them. I'm not going to be able to even probably tell you about all of them. I could spend a, I feel like I could spend a month a month with this watch and probably still learn new things about it every single day. But I'll give you all the information that I can in a time frame that is, you know, reasonable enough to be consumable a consumable video. Uh, first things first, going down the list of the features, I'll just kind of rattle them off for you. It is atomic sync, and it syncs up to six times per day. So you're going to get your, uh, assuming you're in an area where, where it can sync, you're going to get your time set via a radio signal. And uh, basically always have perfect precision accuracy. It is uh, Casio's tough solar, so solar powered charging with... Uh, when, when maximum charged, six months worth of power reserve. So, you know, if you keep this thing in total darkness with no light whatsoever, when it's fully charged, you're gonna get six months out of it. Um, of course, it's G-Shock tough, so it's shock resistant, uh, 200 meter water resist. This is also a triple sensor ABC, so you have altim uh, altimeter, barometer, compass, and of course it also has temperature on it. It'll uh, tell you the temp, uh, so ABCT, I guess, technically. Uh, you get some moon data, moon age and phase. You get a tide graph, so tide information. You get a fully automatic LED backlight, and you also have what they call neo-bright luminescence on the hands and markers. This is obviously an analog digital, so you can see there's the digital screen there, but it also has analog hands and markers. The hands and markers are loomed. Uh, World time features up to 29 time zones plus UTC. Uh, this watch has five daily alarms. You can set an hourly time signal. Of course, you have a stopwatch, one one hundredth of a second stopwatch. There's a fully automatic calendar programmed through 2099. You obviously can, like almost all G-Shocks, have 20, 12 or 24 hour formats on the digital display. And if the watch isn't getting radio signal sync, you will have plus or minus five seconds of accuracy per month. So assuming the, the watch doesn't, for some reason, is, isn't capable of getting your atomic time sync, it's still a very accurate quartz movement, which is module 5371. Yeah, it's that's a mouthful, right? I mean, it, there's a lot going on with this watch. To, to start things off, and I, I wish the handset wasn't in the way there, but uh, you can see on the digital screen, we have 
in timekeeping mode Friday 721. There's a few features that you can display there from timekeeping mode by pushing the top button here. Uh, we'll scroll through them. There's a, there's a graph there of your recent barometer. Uh, this, is, of course, is just the digital display of the time, 726 and 22 seconds. You have a world time feature, so separate time zones and whatnot. This age is, I think it says 27.6. That's the moon age, I believe. And uh, that's it. That's your um, different displays that you can have just in standard timekeeping mode. Now, of course, you have all of the other functions that you would expect from a G-Shock and more. By pushing the bottom, you have another world time setting. Uh, your tide information here, if you push the button again, there's a little tide graph up at the top left here. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not even sure how all the tide stuff works. I haven't even gotten that far in the manual. But for someone that is interested and concerned with different tide information, you have that functionality. The next setting is, of course, the stopwatch. And uh, 1 one hundredth of a second stopwatch. We can start it with the bottom right button. Gets it going. You know, exactly what you'd expect. Stopwatch. Pushing the button again stops it, and then you can reset it with the next uh, top left button there. The next feature is timers. You can see, hopefully, between the handset there, we have it set at five minute countdown. We can kick it off with the bottom right button. Uh, of course, you could set the timer to whatever you want. Uh, the next feature, scrolling through, is your alarms. And you have the five, was it? Yeah, checking my notes here, five daily alarms. So there's one alarm set for 10 o'clock. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. Scroll to alarm number two, alarm number three, alarm number four, alarm number five, and you can have the hourly chime signal turned on or off in this screen as well. Uh, next, the RC screen tells you the last time that the watch synced, so we can see it was 2.03 a.m. on July 21st is the last time that it synced and got the atomic clock time. And uh, yeah, that's that's everything there with uh, with that button. Your standard standard features that you find on a lot of different G-Shocks. When you're in the uh, RC mode, the the sync mode, you can hold down the bottom right button. I believe it is. I'm not going to do it. You can because it takes a little bit of time. You hold that down for a few seconds, and you can manually sync whenever you want. If for some reason you wanted to get another sync, the the top right button. By default, it's just a light. I don't know how well it's going to show up here. I'll maybe test it out in a dark room to show you. But at the very bottom 6 o'clock position, you have a LED light so you can read that digital screen. And I'll go ahead and I'll also roll in, at the same time, a picture of how the loom looks on the handsets and the markers so you guys can check that out as well. Uh, the next thing on the bottom right button when you're just in standard timekeeping mode is how you scroll through your different ABC functions. So first first one we have the compass. We can see that I am currently pointing west-ish. Uh, the, the second hand is always pointing north. Uh, so we, we're pointing in this direction. That's west 275 degrees. Uh, the next function if we step through that is the altimeter. I believe that, yeah, we're not calibrated. I think you probably have to calibrate it for the location that you're in because it's showing negative 100 foot. I'm in Florida, I don't know, my, probably 10 feet above sea level, something in that ballpark, maybe 20 feet above sea level. So yeah, this is showing negative 100. I'm guessing that needs to be calibrated. The next function, uh, we have uh, the temperature gauge showing 82.4. Uh, it probably also needs to be calibrated. I'm not sure that it's quite that warm here, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, probably in that ballpark because I have all of these bright studio lights shining down on us. And then finally you have the barometer. And uh, we'll zoom in here a little bit closer. And you can see, uh, what is the INHG? I forget what that is. Something, maybe it's something in mercury. I, I forget off the top of my head, but uh, it gives you your barometer reading there. 
And uh, to get back to your timekeeping mode, you just push the bottom left button. Now, the last real interesting feature to show you on this watch, of course, so we have a crown over here, and it's not exactly screwed down. It's sort of a locking crown. You can unlock it, it pops out, and you can see there's a little red hash mark. So when you want to relock it, you line up the hash mark red to red, and then scroll it over to the black hash. Once you pop that out, you pull it out to the first position, and this is where you set a lot of your default functions. So right now, we're, uh, we're setting our time zone. You can see that it's set to the second hand pointing over at Chicago, which is uh, Central Time. I, I must have accidentally not set it to Eastern Time. You just scroll the, uh, the crown, and now we're over at Los Angeles uh, Pacific Time. Scroll the crown the other direction. We're over in NYC Eastern Time. The other things that you can set in this mode, I believe it's the bottom left button, so you can step through here. You can turn daylight savings time on and off. You can turn the little chime noise on or off, again, just by scrolling the crown. Uh, the next one, you can turn the auto light on or off. The way that that works is, uh, like when you tilt the watch, the LED will light up, though as if it senses that you're tilting it up to read it. Uh, you can turn that on or off by spinning the crown as well. Uh, you can set the light to be a one second or a three second light. And you can set 12 hour or 24 hour time for the digital display. Uh, I guess this is like a power save mode or something. I didn't play around with that one. And then back to setting your time zone. When you're all done, you just push the crown back in. It goes back to your standard display for timekeeping mode. And you should probably reseat your crown and lock it. That's basically, certainly not everything, but that is the basics of the functionality and the features that I have figured out so far in the time that I've spent with this watch. And again, it does quite a bit. Uh, I know very little about the tide stuff, the moon phase stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of all kinds of technology going on inside of this watch. Uh, but hopefully that gave you a little bit of an overview of an extremely complicated timekeeping device. Uh, last thing I want to talk about before uh, we end this review is just the overall look and feel and design. First of all, we'll talk about the dial. Very nicely done. Those applied markers look excellent. The chapter ring, the, the whole layout here, it, it's really nice quality, really attractive looking stuff. You have this blue bezel here, it's um, a metallic, I don't know if it's steel, aluminum, I'm not exactly sure. The coloration is excellent, the blue on the gray dial. The handset looks very good, you have that little highlight of blue on the counterbalance side of the second hand, which matches up with the arrow on the tide graph there very nicely. All of the Indexes or markers are applied with a blue outline, which also matches more closely the blue on this uh, bezel than the blue highlights on the hands, but nevertheless, it looks great. The digital display is outlined with uh, a gold, which matches up with the tide graph barometer. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for there? Um, not the scale, but... Uh, uh, well, whatever. We'll call it a scale, for lack of a better word. You get that same goldy bronze uh, uh, coloration there. So the whole thing, it's really, really an attractive looking watch. We'll go look at the case and the strap, and we have this sort of arctic white finish. The text on it is blue as well. Everything looks great. Uh, it was really well thought out and well designed. The only probably downside to it, the strap is quite long, and I'll throw it on my wrist and show you exactly how big it is on me, both in terms of the watch itself and how much extra strap I have dangling over. Before I do that, I will show you the, the, the keeper and the buckle hardware. Also extremely well done, stainless steel. It's got a brushed finish with some polishing on the sides. Uh, very, very nice. So I'm gonna throw that on the wrist real quick and give you guys a close look at that. All right, so here it is on my roughly seven inch wrist. Uh, it is big, very big. Uh, is it too big? No, I don't think so. The, the strap, like I had mentioned, is a little long. You have a little bit of tail hanging over. It's not awfully long or, or extremely too long, just a hair too long though for me. 
other than that, though, yeah, it's a big watch, but it's it's meant to be big. It's a G-Shock watch. It's it's like a super tough, t I mean, tool watch, I guess. It, like, it is a tool. You know, it's an outdoors watch. It's probably, with all of the tide information, maybe something that you'd use if you were sailing. Um, so I don't think that the size is really a problem on this watch if you're using it for what it's meant to be used for, an outdoors watch, an adventure watch, a boating or sailing watch, this isn't going to be probably the type of watch that you're going to want to wear on a daily basis as any sort of fashion statement or anything because of the size. But I give it a pass because that's not what it's meant for. If you use it for what it's meant to be used for, I don't find the sizing to be a problem. Just the bracelet or, or strap rather being a little too long. And I suppose I could probably, well, here's the issue. That's that's where I have it. If I if I move it back one notch, then because of the size and weight, it flops around a bit on me, and uh, we have less of an issue of the strap hanging over, hanging over. Although it does still a bit, then we can pull the keeper up closer, I guess. But then it's kind of loose and very floppy. So you gotta because of the size and weight of it, you gotta cinch it down a little bit tight. And again, if, if I cinch it out tight, I get extra tail on the strap hanging over. But again, uh, it's not a fashion watch. It's not meant to be uh, worn, I think, like as a daily wear watch. It's, it, it is a tool. It's a great tool. It's durable, rugged, uh, pretty amazing, honestly. So yeah, that's it. That's the Casio Golfmaster GWN1000E-8A. Obviously, this is not going to be a watch that's for everyone, but if you have a purpose for it, or if you just like big Casio G-Shocks, um, you know, you can't go wrong with it. It's outstanding. Uh, I will find this model or similar models. I don't know if this specific, maybe that's um, in the white with the blue, that might be a limited edition. I'm not positive, but I'll look around for the different models and color variations, and I'll put links to them on Amazon down in the comments or the notes section below. If you're interested in picking this watch up or one of its variations, uh, obviously it's through my Amazon affiliate account. So if you do pick it up, I get a small commission, which obviously I appreciate. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed a, taking a look at this G-Shock with me. And uh, we'll be back with another review uh, later on in the week. Bye now.